have a bit of a confession to make. I am definitely not as good of a programmer as you think I am. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now, as you read in the title of this video, programming tutorials are a lie. But what exactly does that mean? Well, essentially, all I'm trying to say is that programming tutorials don't really represent what it is actually like to be a programmer. Because a tutorial takes out all of the struggle, all of the errors, all the failures, and presents you with only the perfect, clean, golden code written as quickly and as perfectly as possible with no mistakes. And I don't know if you tried programming ever, but it never works that way. I mean, here's a little clip of what it actually looks like for me to program. Okay, let me just save this real quick. Oh, error, unexpected token. Oh, I just forgot a bracket here. That's not too bad. Okay, let's save this again. Oh, mother. I'm sure that you can definitely relate with that. I mean, when I tell people what I do, I tell them my job is either A, a professional Googler, because I always have to look up how to do things all the time, or I tell them that my job is to fail 300 times and maybe succeed once, and then realize I didn't actually write a test for the situation where it actually failed, so really I failed 301 times and never succeeded. That's essentially what programming is. You fail over and over and over again. You forget a semicolon, you forget a parenthesis, you accidentally create an infinite loop, and you do that over and over again until finally you get to something that actually works. And then in reality, that thing never really works. There's always bugs with your system. Even the tutorials I create, they have bugs in them that I don't find before I make the tutorial, but you surely do find. Because there's thousands of you watching each of my tutorials, and there's only one of me looking at the code, so I'm bound to make mistakes and bugs that I don't actually find on my own. But the problem is, none of this is portrayed inside of programming tutorials. Most programming tutorials take you from point A to point B as quickly and cleanly as possible with the sole goal of teaching you what to do. I'm going to let you in on a little bit of a secret here, but the way that I'm able to make my tutorials so seamless and flow so well is that I have all of the code for the entire tutorial video up on my second monitor. That way, when I'm writing out the code, I know exactly what to do because I can reference the complete, finished working version of the code. That's not at all what programming is like because you never have a finished version to look at. But having that finished version means that my video will be more polished and easier to follow, which will help you in the learning process, because that's the point of a tutorial. Also, I constantly pause and restart recordings when I'm editing. I usually only go for about 30 seconds to a minute talking before I have to pause because I made a mistake, restart, and go again, just so I can get a perfectly flowing, seamless tutorial for you. That way you don't have to watch me fumbling around, looking at errors in the console for an hour before I realize, oh crap, I forgot to put a parenthesis. Because trust me, I do that all the time. And it's important to know that this type of failure is completely normal, and no matter what skill level you are, you're always going to run into errors and bugs. I would consider myself quite skilled when it comes to CSS. I have a lot of knowledge of how it works behind the scenes, but when I write CSS code, it usually looks like this. Okay, time to create a card. Let's just give it some padding, say 10 pixels, and border, one pixel, black, solid. Let's see how that looks. Uh, hmm. Let's try 15 pixels. Maybe 20? Uh, maybe 20 and 10. And you know what, this, I don't, I don't quite like this black. Let's try like CCC. Uh, maybe, maybe 333. Three, three. Mmm, I don't know, maybe I should have some rounded corners, like 10 pixels. No, oh, that looks terrible, let's not do that. Um, you know, let's just not do a card, let's, yeah, but, you know, it looks fine like this, I think. Yeah, that's good. I'm just constantly always tweaking things over and over and over and over again until I finally get it to look somewhat right. But in a tutorial, I know exactly how many pixels of spacing, I know the exact RGB hex value of all the colors that I need. That's not how it works in real life. You just have to experiment and try and work over and over and over again until you finally get to the right answer. And it doesn't matter how skilled you are, that is what programming is. It's a lot of trial and error, a lot of problem solving, and you just have to fail over and over and over again until you finally get to the point where you got done what you wanted. Because of this, a lot of people actually ask for, you know, live coding tutorials or ask for tutorials where there's no editing and it's all done raw without any, you know, previous experience or previous programming of the project. But a problem with that is that First of all, this is not very conducive to learning because essentially you're just looking at me, scratching my head, trying to figure out what's wrong, and you're probably screaming at the screen the entire time saying, oh my gosh, you missed a semicolon right there, I can't believe you didn't see it, and I spend 30 minutes trying to solve the problem. That's not very fun to watch, it's not very good for learning, 
and all of my videos would be like six hours long and <laughs> no one has time for that. So instead, what some people do is they use Twitch as a live streaming service to live stream them coding code that they've never done before as a way to teach, as in saying, here, we're all going to code this together. But unfortunately, this again is a little bit of a lie. It doesn't really encapsulate what programming is all about, because with Twitch, while yes, you're programming live and you make mistakes and you don't have any way to edit them out, you also have a thousand people watching you or hundreds of people watching you all telling you what the mistake is. So instead of having to Google on Stack Overflow or search all over the place to find your mistake, you have hundreds of people commenting in chat saying, hey, you forgot a parenthesis or hey, you made this bug. So it's really easy because you have hundreds of people code reviewing you simultaneously while you're coding. I mean, I wish I had this when I was writing code by myself, just had a horde of people behind me finding all the errors for me. That would be amazing. But unfortunately, when you're on your own programming, even if you have a buddy in your pair programming, the two sets of eyeballs are not going to be enough to find all of the errors and bugs that happen. So you have to do debugging. You have to figure out what your errors are. That's just a natural process of programming. And it really doesn't matter what channel you're watching, whether it's mine, Kevin Powell, DevEd, Traversy Media, or the legendary Bucky Roberts. All of us make mistakes when we're programming, and it's perfectly normal. The amount of time it takes for me to create a tutorial video is orders of magnitude longer than the actual video itself. And that's just because I have to pour so much time into debugging all of these problems. Even when I'm creating things that to me are very simple and I've done hundreds of times before, I still make mistakes and that's perfectly normal. I would say in a normal day of writing code, I probably don't even spend half the day writing code. That'd be a really generous number if I'm doing something really easy that I'm super used to. But usually, I spend tons of time reading documentation, watching tutorial videos, reading articles, just looking on Stack Overflow to figure out why the heck I'm getting this weird random error. All of that time is spent not actually coding, but it's still working towards the end goal. And when you're working on your own and you see all these tutorials, you think, wow, they just get it the first time. They always get it right. You're thinking, why am I struggling so much? Why am I on Stack Overflow? Why am I even watching all these tutorials? I should just get it the first time. But the truth is, nobody gets it on the first time. No matter who it is, they never get it on the first try. And you just have to fail and go through those processes of looking things up and reading code and watching tutorials because that's what everyone has to do. And it's perfectly normal. So if you're at all feeling discouraged because you can't program a to-do list application as fast as I can in my tutorial videos, don't be because I can't even program a to-do list application as fast as I do in my tutorials. I spend so much more time behind the scenes, just like everyone else, failing over and over again until we finally stumble upon the correct answer. And that is pretty much all I have to say about this topic. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other discussion-based videos. I'm going to link them over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.